if you look at the uh, FATF travel rule guidance, they're relatively clear on what you need to send, right? You need to send some originator data and you need to send some beneficiary data. And in the end, it comes down for the originator data, you need to send the name, an internal account number and an address. And for the beneficiary, you need to send the name of the beneficiary and, the, and, the, and an internal uh, account number. And it might be helpful uh, if you take a step back and uh, realize why you're sending this. So uh, a financial investigator um, uses this as to, to pluck a threat, right? So they suspect some, um, uh, some uh, whitewashing or, uh, or um, money laundering, some stuff like that. And they go from one exchange, they, uh, they pluck out this, uh, this data, this travel rule data, and then they move on to the next one, and then they move on to the next one, and then they move on to the next one. So that's the goal of the data. I think that's, uh, that's important to realize. So if you really boil it down, if you look at the, uh, the FAT of travel rule, that's um, the data they require to send. Um, that's of course the easy story. Now, for example, if you look at uh, if you look at uh, MAS in Singapore, they require you to send more data than uh, than it's uh, strictly uh, strictly necessary. And here it, here it becomes hairy because um, the product or the 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 uh, the service you're going to need to build as a cost needs to take into account all these little details. As Barbara mentioned, maybe the counterparty VASP is not using TRP but Open VASP or they're on uh, on another protocol entirely or no protocol at all. So you need to take that into account. 